Hey, we are back, sort of. Let's talk about this Wizards-Philly game. Wizards lose 131 to 126 to Philly Wednesday. Some interesting things happen. Some disgusting things happen. We're going to get into all that real quick as we recap the game. Thank you for tuning into another video. It's your boy, Justin, a.k.a. Drive Keeper Pete. Happy to have you here to, to share in a little bit of misery. But to be honest with you, this is a good game. And it's not just based on the final score. It wasn't like the fourth quarter mob came in and, and, and you know fixed everything to make the score look respectable then as they had been doing earlier this season. Now, this is pretty much a competitive game throughout. The Wizards just lost in crunch time again through some, some stuff you really expected. Um, what I didn't expect in the first quarter, though, we got some interesting things. High-paced game where both Gaff and MB were putting up, I think, the first 10 points of the jump. Uh, MB was pretty much unstoppable most of this game. And I say most specifically because there's certain things I think could have slowed him down that the Wizards didn't really get to tap into but for so long. Um, but out the gate, it was MB versus Gaff for the first 10. And it was just a high-paced game. A lot of buckets in transition. Uh, Kuz got some. Maxi got some. Everybody on both sides. I was getting some um some things that really stuck out for me though the pool great game for him very efficient game i think he finished like a 9 to 13 i'll go over that later but he played well under control in this one from start to finish used his pick and roll pick and roll effectively he was hitting shots in the mid-range out of pick and roll not that runner from a wing that they keep having him do but more so just just shots down the middle of it uh places I've, I've been asking for him to get more looks at and i'm happy to see that um occurred on wednesday uh there is the fact that when Gallo came in for Gaff, I think Gaff had an early two fouls or something uh, against Embiid. Embiid kept him in foul trouble all game, fouled him out really. But when Gallo came in, it was very interesting. Embiid was doing his damage mainly from the middle of the floor, uh, high post from the elbow, all that stuff. Catch the ball, post it up, turn around, face you, and do, does what he wants to do. Or just back you out and does what you want to do. Gaff is not built for that. You know who is? Gallo. Gallo defended the middle of the floor well against Embiid because really you, all Embiid could do is put a body on Gallo and Gallo just put his body back, aka big, you know, Italian Hodor held his ground there and kind of neutralized Embiid early on uh, in his few minutes against him on defense, really when he's just defending that middle of the floor. Uh, some other interesting things that kind of plagued this game to me, another interesting one, Kuz's is looks, man. This was a game that Kuz had 16 shots attempts. 16. I'll get into that later. Um, for a close game, though, that's a little too few. And in general, it's a little too few. But it started in the first quarter, mainly because I think everybody was putting up points a little bit. All five starters scored, I believe. Um, again, the, the pace of the game really favored the Wizards' offense, so you got some positive looks out of that. Another interesting point in that first quarter, two more. Jared Butler, early minutes. Pretty much for this game, I'll summarize it. Good on offense for his uh, effective backup minutes. And then some just picked on on defense. What do you have, like five... He had 5,000 in this one, man. And they just got three in the first half quick, I think. Uh, picked on it, but when he was on offense, I, I did like the flashes there. Handled the pick and roll well. Really, this was a pick and roll game at the end of it when the teams really wanted to get it going. And the last thing that really stuck out to me is first quarter, Bilal Kulabale. So, you know, Bilal's the man. He's our guy. He's doing what he does. Drew didn't beat assignment on both sides. So on offense, he was posted up in the corner and B was just roaming off. Of him. He was like, all right, Rook, make me pay. And guess what? He did that. Uh, had, I forget who was operating the pick and roll, probably like Butler or whatever. Pitched it to Bilal in the corner and B tried to close out. Bilal makes him pay, goes by him. Lays it in. It was beautiful stuff. Then, a couple possessions later, on defense, strips and beat, runs the other way for the and one. Uh, yeah, for an one layup. Oh, no, the and one layup. Sorry, was the other thing. Whatever. He was showing good flashes. Sorry, I'm trying to remember. I'm still a little under the weather and shit. But, love those minutes. Wizards were up 29-25 uh, at the end of the first quarter, man, because the pace really favored them, and they did some things that were effective, and everybody was effective, I think, that first quarter. Uh, and then the second quarter was really when the game started opening up. Both teams started running pick and roll more. So, a lot of instances where a guy was in the five as a drop. Gaff was in the five as a drop. You had Tyus or Poole up top, and it's just not something you're really going to be able to defend well. Conversely, on the other side, putting Embiid and Maxi in a pick and roll really hurt Embiid. Embiid was playing up a lot and got uh, and had to pay the price when guys would go by him uh, and, and convert. And, excuse me. And when he dropped back some as well, uh, guys were able to really make him pay. That's where I think Jordan Poole was rather effective coming down the middle of the lane using that pick and roll with Embiid and drop. And he was able to get a couple of baskets, I think, uh, around the layup line, um, just pull up middies. Uh, just making uh, Joel Embiid pay and making Maxi pay. Really. Uh, there wasn't a really any pick and roll defender I think that was good this game at all. So, whatever. Wizards are up 62 60 at the half. I think the law was probably the player that stood out uh, the most with me in that. Three steals in the first half. He had like six, eight points as well. Very aggressive play. Taking the shots as soon as he got the ball. A lot of catch, uh, catch and shoot or catch and goes. And that's what we want to see from Bilal. It's going to have to look probably a lot like Kuz did last year where he finds the opportunities to score and takes them. You know, ask questions later. So. Uh, big problem was, I think, in the second quarter. Oh, let's talk about it. We had good minutes, I think, from Corey as well. This game uh, was hitting his threes, hitting his shots well. Mike Muscala had some uh, some nice minutes in there, too. The, the big thing that kind of hurt the Wizards, they were plus 10 when Gav came back in in the second quarter with a few minutes to go. And B checked back in, too. And ended the quarter up, too. I mean, it's hard to stop and B, but at the same time, like that, that really hurts. Uh, overall, that first half is very balanced scoring. 22 assists, three turnovers was great to me compared to Philly's kind of standstill offense. 11 assists, eight turnovers. Weren't moving the ball much or well. Uh, pick and roll defense was a problem for both teams. Uh, get to the third quarter, Gaff. Honestly, this is kind of a monster game for Gaff. I think he ended with, what, 18 points, six rebounds, four assists, a steal, and two blocks. Filled up the stat sheet. Five major areas. Even flash, I forget what quarter it was. A little 10-footer shot, a little eight, 10 footer shot or whatever. Um, this is, it, it's good for him. Like, he's never going to win that battle against Embiid, at least not as is for, for both of them. But the effort he exuded, uh, the, 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 the intensity he played with, and 
the effectiveness of, I think, his scoring really stood out to me in this one. Not just on the stat sheet, but, again, the effectiveness, how it went about, not just what the results were. We're great. Uh, third quarter again, JP was hooping his butt off. Pick and roll defense was not there for Philly. And this, this is interesting to me how, like, they were bringing, uh, they had Batum starting. Uber was coming off the bench. Roko provided some minutes. Just the pick and roll defense, once you put Embiid in it, it's trash. Even without Embiid in it, I forgot, uh, was it Paul Reed? Paul Reed had to pay. Bilal had a nice transition dunk, gammed it over his head. I think that was the third quarter. Overall, I like the, the Philly can't defend a pick and roll. I don't, I, the playoffs going to be very interesting for them. Uh, they even had words. Maxi and B were even having words after a timeout after uh, a Wizards score uh, off of the pick and roll. So good for the Wizards being able to do that. So we're looking at the fourth quarter, right? 20 shot attempts in the fourth quarter. Kyle Kuzma has two. Not a typo. 10% of your shots in the fourth quarter of a close game against a top four seed in the East. A team, you. this is a good win for your team morally and just how you played as well. Win losses too, of course, but this is a good game to lock up. Your top option has two attempts in the fourth quarter. Played seven and a half minutes, so he's out there long enough. Second option, Jordan Poole. Two attempts in the fourth quarter. Neither of them getting the ball in their hand enough. I'm seeing the ball being brought up by Tyus Jones, by Denny. Uh, and, and the ball's being moved too much. Get it to your two guys. Even if it's being moved for them to get... They, it needs to get off all looks for those two guys primarily. I get Corey can have four shots. Cool. Tyus Jones should not have more shot attempts than Corey or Jordan Poole in the fourth quarter. Especially if they're both like doing well enough. Tyus went 3-4. I don't care. It is representative of, I think, the bad philosophy used in that final quarter to get certain guys looks or not to intentionally get guys looks. Your top two scorers need more than 20% of your shots in a close game. That's, it's, it's not good coaching to me. It, you've had enough close good game, good close games now. Excuse me, you have enough close games now to have a good sample set of data to pull from. As much as he's an analytics guy, loves attention to detail and all that shit, where are the details when it comes to crunch time? That's where I need to start seeing some steady improvement. You've had at least a handful of good crunch time opportunities this season so far in your first 20 games where... This goes back two years ago. This, this West might just be lactose intolerant and have a glucose intolerance. Just lacks, the, lacks the bread and butter when you need it most. It would have been a great time, as I've been advocating before the season even started. JP and Kuz, two-man game, would be nice. It would be nice. And hard to stop. Kuz Gaff have a two-man game that works, and you can use JP off ball. Did not see any of that. JP and Gaff have a decent enough chemistry, and I think 105 pick and roll on offense against a Maxi and Embiid uh, def defense, I I'm fine with those chances that they both cooking already. But we didn't get none of that. We got swings across the perimeter, looking for shots for Corey. Ty is taking it upon himself to be a scorer more than a playmaker. Yes, he has seven points and three assists in the quarter. But who else, too? And why do he have the ball so much? This is not the, this is, I don't know what sort of long-term thinking involved is there with some of these decisions, if it exists at all. I'm not seeing it. The performance and the, 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 the strategy in crunch time, I've not seen it all year. I just have it, and it's unfortunate because these are teams always had bad habits and in the sense of new and wanting to be better and improve. Like, bad habits have to go, and I'm not saying you can get rid of them all in one day and have nothing but good habits the next day because that's not how people work. That's not how processes work. That's not a process. The process would be chip away at the little crap as you build to the big crap and get rid of the crap. But all I saw was a whole bunch of crap. I did. There was no possession damn near in that fourth quarter where I was like, oh, this feels like something I want to see as the season goes along. None of it. It just wasn't there. Kuz had to take it upon himself too much in this game. JP did well when he did that. Or when he had a stint, especially in the third quarter, where he was the main PG uh, out there, as opposed to Jared Butler. Um, that's not a diss to Jared Butler. He did solid enough in mean, splash minutes, but there's a splash opportunity, really. But these are the guys, this team looks at the score night in and night out. So why you wouldn't do that in one of the more crucial times of a game, a highly competitive one where you have a sincere chance of winning, had a lead at several points, and you, and you just choose not to do it. I, I don't get it. There's a lot of things I don't. I choose not to do. Uh, I mean, I understand that they choose not to do or choose to do. And this is just, you just add that to the freaking list, man. Add to the list. Gaff fouls out. And instead of bringing in Bilal, right? Gaff fouls out with a few minutes ago. And B is going in on his little tear. Just throw it to him. Turn around, face you up, do whatever he wants. The final lineup of the game, Kuz, Denny, JP, Tyus, Corey. Tell me where that makes sense defensively. Tell me why in a game where Bilal had double digit points for sure. I'm not looking at it right now. I'm trying to do it. Had double digit points for sure. And he's not. Why is he not in over, over, over Tyus? If JP's shown you the whole game, hey, I can handle this. I've been handling the ball very effectively as recently as the, the third quarter for an extended stretch. Why not try him as the point guard at that time? Everything, the rest of the lineup, I wouldn't mind. If you decide to go small because you think that's better to defend a pick and roll and you have Kuz scale down to your five, Denny at your four, uh, Bilal and Corey, well, really Corey at the, at the three, Bilal at your two, and JP at your one. Yeah, I mean, JP, uh, JP and Kisper can end up being in a pick and roll too. But you have three solid to very good defenders out there behind them. That can switch if you need to. That can do a lot of things. Like, Bilal had an assignment on Embiid where I think if you even threw him in at the five 
it at least would have been more interesting and gave Philly more to think about than just plugging in Tyus and Corey. I, I don't get it. Still early. But it, there, there's been cycles of early that we were hoping by sitting through it, we get to some stuff that we want to see. And it just, you know, you, you hope it, 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 it's better the rest of the season. This was just another crunch time game. The Wizards chose to lose via decision making, by coaching. And to a degree, execution. But really, I put it more on the coaches on this one. Just and your point guard. If Tyus is out there as your point guard, give it to your guys that are supposed to be out there for you to give an assist to. I don't need to see you taking it upon yourself as much. Make the defense work through Kuz. Make them work through JP. But here we are. All right, so player of the game. You know what? I'm 18 points, six rebounds, four assists, three stocks. And I love the laws play this game. I love Poole's game. Play this game. This one's got to go to Gaff, though, man. Battle was effective. Did what he could. You know, once they went to pick and roll, it was just even harder for him to defend things. But I think he held his own enough in this one. Monster game, 18.6 rebounds for assists. The way he did it, the way he battled, uh, defended with patience, and just really took. I mean, you still allowed 50, I think, from Embiid, but I eh, brush it to the side. I think for a backup, Moonlighting is a starting center. He did well this game. So props to you, Gaff. Uh, your player of the night. In terms of who I'm starting the rest of this game with, you got to go Gaff, of course. JP. Solid game. Probably maybe his best game of the season in terms of effective shooting. 23 points, 10 to 16 from the field, 3 of 5 from 3. No free throws, which bugs the hell out of me. No free throws for him and Kuz. Bugs the hell out of me. You guys got to get to the line, man. Got to. This team cannot function well. We just had uh, eight free throw attempts. And that's something Wes Unsell Jr. complained about. Sure, your guys have to be able to play with contact, play through contact. And as much as they like to be finesse, as much as they like to see them do Euro steps and stuff like that, man, you got to take some bumps. You got to have to learn how. You got to make refs make more calls. And I think you got to be a little bit more physical to do that. But no free throw attempts is, is borderline unacceptable. So starting Gaff, Poole, Bilal. Uh, I want to see Jared Butler give him some love. Four points, no baskets. Four assists, though, and a rebound. He got beat the hell up out there, but he, he was solid in his minutes. And I guess, I guess Corey, 16 points, three rebounds, assists, a steal. Uh, it's solid enough. Now, this is, this is where it gets interesting. I'm going to actually bench. I'm going to bench Ty. Ah, it's hard to bench Ty. He put up good numbers. But I think for me, the big thing is when it's... It's hard to say whether it was his decision making. I mean, it's not all on him. You have to follow the, the coach's play call. So I get that. I don't appreciate he wasn't looking for Kuz or JP enough. Especially Kuz throughout the game, let alone in crunch time. So I, I can't bench him, but I will bench Kuz. I will bench Kuz. Um, Tarina a little bit too passive. 16 points, 3 rounds, 7 assists. Like he's doing things. I need him to demand it a little bit more. You saw the frustration, I forget who we were playing, where uh, the, the, the Wizards could have challenged, I think it was Boston, some team that was talking too much smack, I got mad at, for real, I think a lot of people were, coaching call, a uh, 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 challenge when you're supposed to, and I know that's in you, that's my point, I know it's in you to say something, next step is say something, more, not just in the interview, say that shit on the floor, and make them feel you or hear you, because you're not just here to play ball, I think you're here to help build a winner, and some of that Sometimes I think winning does involve challenging people in uncomfortable situations. And this just feels like a situation where as a leader of this team, a dude who's been doing it damn near all year, have more of a voice or go get the ball and make the coach say something to you or adjust. That's, that's just me. Solid game otherwise. But yeah, I have to bench you for that little piece alone. Uh, and, we, and Tyus can have one cheek on the seat, one cheek off the seat. For me, it is, again, when crunch time happens, you can't disappear as a point guard. Six turnover ratio is fun and all. But if that doesn't equate to dubs or highly effective like development and progress, then I don't really care. They're just they're just fun stats. Kevin Love in Minnesota, fun stats. So yeah, uh, next game we'll just take on the Nets. That should be an interesting one, especially the way McCall uh, Bridges has been hooping lately. You got Cam Thomas, Cam Johnson out there, Den Whitty, hopefully get some revenge on him. No Ben Simmons. We'll see what happens. But yeah, thanks for tuning in to another video. Excuse me, I hope I'm getting right, but uh. Like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. I appreciate you. We have a TikTok account up now. Eventually hope to be on Blue Sky as well, so I can get stuff from there. But in the meantime, of course, you can find me on YouTube. Find me on Twitter. Uh, it's your boy Justin. Try to kick repeat. Thank you again for tuning in. See you at the next one.